welcome to a special episode of the Westlife Podcast. As always, we are sponsored by MG Pump Solutions. And as always, please give us a follow on the socials at Westlife Pod on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook.com forward slash Westlife Pod. Uh, now, after a big week uh, on the show, we uh, had some, yeah, absolute uh, incredible amount of people um, yeah, listening to our episodes this week. So I'm assuming there's a lot of new listeners listening in. And if you are new, we have had a few special episodes like this with uh, ex-players. And um, yeah, earlier in the year, we had Adam Dwayhe and Sean Bloor on. So if, you, uh, if you're if you new to listening to the show and haven't heard those yet, uh, scroll back on the, on the feed. Give us, a, give us a subscribe while you're there. And um, check out those interviews as well. But um, yeah, obviously, this is a big one. One of the it's always awesome to have one of the 2005 brothers, legends of the, that squad. And there's probably no more beloved person to, uh, in terms of West Tigers history than uh, John Scandala. So it was an absolute honour to chat to him. So without uh, further further wait, here is my chat with the great Scando. How's the off season going? Is are you able to have a an off season uh, in your new role? Or no, no, mate. My season basically starts. This is the start. This I'm in the corporate side of it, obviously, so the sponsorship side of it. So, um, mate, for me, this is our busy time. Well, when I say busy time, it's where we we sort of knuckle down the most to to prepare for 2022. So, um, yeah. And so no, no off season for me. And um, anymore, yeah, right. So it's um getting into the busy. Is is this time of year, uh, September for like, what what time of year do you miss footy the most? Like you miss miss playing. Is there a certain time of year? Oh yeah, definitely. Well, mate, look. Unfortunately for for me, I only made the semi finals twice. So every other year, I hated semi final time because I was never in it. But yeah. um. But, you know, lucky enough to win one and, and play in the semis, uh, yeah, definitely semi-final time, like this September. Um, you know, going into October is where you get most excited, I'd say. Yeah. Um, any player would would say that. Or, you know, anyway, any player that's played in semis and grand finals, um, this is where you get those little tingles in your feet and, and memories come flocking back. Yeah, I can only imagine. Mm. And I'm assuming the pre-season is the opposite. For a player, yeah, yeah definitely. That's what, yeah, what yeah. you miss the least. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, and no, yeah, and no. Look, there's parts of it that you don't like. Um, like the, the early part of the off season, you know, the first two three weeks when your body needs to adapt again from the break that you've had is the hardest, and that's where you sort of um, you don't miss that. But you know, once you get past that two or three weeks sort of training, you know, you start enjoying it again because you're fit again and you're you're sort of into the groove. So. It's not too bad, and that's where the fun starts, really, because you, you know, you get to do camps, you get to do a lot of things with the teams. Um, there's a lot of, yeah, just a lot of camaraderie sort of stuff going on. So um, that's the part I miss. But um, the first two weeks of preseason suck because it's always the hottest time too. So yeah, um, yeah, no, don't miss, don't miss that part of it at all. And the team, obviously, uh, I've seen on their social media, they're all. Um, relaxing a little bit at the moment after a, a pretty long uh pro- some you could easily say disappointing year but it's a very young squad um yep. you have to take into account but did did you uh obviously you don't you're more on the business side of things but as a um a fan yourself of the club did you have high expectations from the team this year oh big time yeah yeah i had um huge expectations of the team i think most people did um, yeah, I think everyone was a little bit, you know, I guess shocked and obviously disappointed that we didn't make the semis. Um, you know, and saying that we had our chances for a good, if you look at the where we finished on, on the table, um, and then you look at some of the some of the games that we we dropped, um, you know, we could have easily been in there, stuck in there, yeah, without it, without a doubt. Um, so, um yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah, definitely high hopes. Um, you know, we we finished what four points out of the out of the out of the semis. Yeah, yeah, that's that's two games. You look at the two games that we 
my Ocker name four games that we basically Easily, blew, yeah. all blew. Um, you know, and that puts us that puts us in sixth position, so seventh position. Um, so the Rabbitohs so, one's yeah. a big one. We, we they're about to possibly go into the grand final, and yeah, we yeah. took them like a bounce of the ball away from uh, well, from taking them exactly. On, so. Yeah, um, exactly. So you, you put that one in. There's twenty points, and you you know you you realistically you you would hope and thought that we would have won the two games. Um, yeah, like one at like how one counts out for the Tommy Memorial weekends. Um, you know, there's there's a Titans game that we dropped Parramatta we had on the brink. You know, can, you can name easy four games. Yeah. Um, and that puts us in the semis. Do you but, think? Yeah, saying that that's they're the teams that go into the semis the ones that can capitalise on those ones. Absolutely. That's the difference. Absolutely. Do you think in, in experience is a lot to do with that? Like I said, I think we're the youngest on average, the youngest squad. In the league, do you think there was a lot of it was down to just inexperience in our team? Uh, yeah, I right, know. Yeah, I right, know. You can mix. Look, inexperience doesn't always. You know, inexperience you you replace with enthusiasm um, by the young kids, which yep. can do a lot. You know, you look at our team in '05, and uh, we had, geez, seven guys who had played less than thirty games. Yeah. Uh, but what they brought to the game, what they brought to the team wasn't experience in place of experience was their enthusiasm and their their you know their their no fear to sort of to play how they want to play and not and not lose sort of thing. Um I'd say look, yeah, it's a hard one though. Yes and no. Yeah and no. Yeah. Because um you do need the experience. You know, you look at the game, teams like Storm and and the Roosters and teams that have been there and done that before, they've all got players that have, you know, played a hundred plus games either playing big games or semi-finals or some sort of origin games. Yeah. Um, so they've got that big game experience. So, yeah, that, that helps. But, yeah, again, that enthusiasm is what sometimes um, can, can get you over the line. Yeah. Uh, one of the positives to come out of this year, um, young Stefano, um, as a former yeah, front row yourself, um, yeah, how, how much did he impress you this year? Yeah, he was good. Well, mate, like I think he impressed everybody. He yeah. was... Um, you know, he had probably had a, a slow start to the season. Um, try, still trying to find his feet, and you can excuse that for, you know, for for such a young uh, player and being a front rower too. Um, it takes you a while to sort of get into that 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 mentality that you're the leader of the team. And I think for him, being young, he probably didn't see that so much until he made that Origin squad and um, came out from the Origin squad a different player, different totally mindset. Yep. Um, I think he started believing that he can be the leader of the team, not leader in, in being a captain, but leader just on what he did on the field. And, you know, I think he certainly showed that. So, um, yeah, no, he was fantastic for everyone. So being in that environment, what do you think he would have taken out of that? That did just, like you said, a bit of confidence and that sort of thing? Oh, huge confidence, yeah. To know that he's, I think, you know, when you when you play, you, you, you're not really sure if you're going well or you're, you know, sometimes people say you're going, well, you're playing ball, but in yourself, you, it takes a while to believe that. And I think of him making that origin team, that would have helped him believe in himself. Like, just thinking, oh, well, I'm getting picked for the origin like squad. I'm getting thought about people. Well, I must be doing all right. So that just bit of confidence there obviously helped him a fair bit. So, um, yeah, he would, have got a, he would have got heaps out of that. And, and coming back into the, you know, coming back into the squad, um, he would have, yeah, he just would have had his... You know, he would have been proud of himself. He would have been. He would have been. Um, he just would have been. Yeah, he just would have felt positive. That's all positive vibes. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, guys like him, like these, these young, got a lot of young up and coming talents like him, Dane, Adam, uh, and Sean, etc. It it does seem like we were in a similar situation, maybe 2004, like coming into 2005. Like you said, we had. Um, a lot of young guys coming through and then the experienced guys like yourself, Mark O'Neill, and that sort of thing. What was it back then? I mean, uh, I mean, it's 16 years ago now, but is there anything back then that kind of clicked or something that worked that you think could happen with this team in the near future? Uh, I think just belief, mate, to be honest. Okay. You know, it's just... A bit of belief in themselves that they're, they're a good team, they're good players. Um, believe in what their, their structures are during the year. 
look, we were just a good mix. I think we were, you know, it was almost the perfect storm for us where we had four or five players or probably more, probably yeah, four or five players that, you know, were coming towards the end of their um, careers, um, well, close to coming towards the end of their careers and weren't very, you know, successful on the field in terms of playing semis and finals and all that. And then you had a bunch of young kids like your Fortins, your, your Farrers, um, you know, Gibbs and all those guys who had come from successful junior rep teams. And all they all they did was um, experience winning where they came to our team. And it was just a mix, a, a mixture, you know, it was just, it was just uh, it's hard to explain, but yeah. it's just, it's just a, um, and yeah, look, the, the, the same can happen with this team, you know, they haven't had much success, um, but individually they're all good players. That's the thing. I think once they combine, um, combine that, um, I think, yeah, you will see a different team. It's just a matter of getting that together. That's all. Yeah. It was, I mean, 2005, it was like mid season, you guys kind of just flicked a switch and you said it was a belief so was there kind of like a game or a, a moment sort of thing where that kind of the confidence kind of just went into overdrive and you guys kind of thought you know what like we can go all the way here uh look the probably the moment that everyone sort of speaks about is so we had a we, we did have a um uh we had a goal to finish uh top four beginning of the year um and I think the moment that probably sticks out to everybody's mind in that um in that year was I think it was oh, God. I've got one in my mind. I'll see if it's the same one. It's probably Benny Gilly. Oh no, I was talking about talking about a game a game specifically. A game? Yeah, yeah. But oh, yeah. okay. What, what was it with Ben? ben probably Gilly? the game. Probably, yeah, it was just we, we, were, we were sort of reassessing our, our sort of goals and Benny. Benny Gilly sort of just, um, you know, we'll, we were talking about, you know, should we reassess the goal about making top four? Because we were a little bit, I think we, we dropped a few games. Um, and Benny sort of stood up and said, no, that's, you know, I think we can, I think we can stick to that top four. And he sort of, you know, egged, egged everybody onto stage and, and put that goal to top four, which we, we eventually did. We finished fourth. Um, but I, I don't think it was, I don't think it was a certain game that sort of sticks in my mind that changed it. I just, because once we started winning, we just kept winning. I think we yeah. won like 11 in a row or something, something like that. I can't remember the, what it was. Um, but it was, yeah. But I, it was just a matter of – but the thing was winning. When you win, winning, winning becomes, yeah, the norm for you. You don't feel like you're going to lose again. Yeah. But when you're losing, unfortunately, it's hard to get out of that rut because as soon as something goes wrong on the field, you don't mean for it to happen. But it's just you just feel like it's, okay, here we go again sort of thing. So – and do you um, think that's something that the kid, the guys, are, the current squad are kind of going oh, through? Yeah. Like maybe that win over South it could have been a sliding doors moment and they would have taken a lot of confidence and then those games where they just lost might have turned into just wins. Is it? 100%, 100% agree with that, yeah. Uh, 100% agree. That's, you know, that that win against South could have been the one that, you know, springboarded him into winning two and three and four and so on and so on. Yep. Unfortunately, uh, it went the other way and they dropped their heads. And again, without, you don't do it on purpose, but without knowing, you know, you probably, your confidence drops a fair bit. Um, so, whereas for us, I think we won, we beat the Bulldogs um, in 05 um, by a point. And then we just, I think we went on from there to win. Mm. That's when we started that sort of that run, which was yeah. good. You beat the Roosters a week before too, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think so yeah, it was well, the, two, the two grand final teams, yeah. Yeah, so uh, then we went a bit of a, a bit of a run after that. The moment uh, for me, from a fan's perspective, because I I got my license that year. I turned seventeen that year, so I got my P's that year. So it just worked <laughs> out perfectly. I lived up the Central Coast. We could drive down to every single game, so it was just like perfect timing for me as a fan. But the game uh, that it, I driving home from Cronulla when you guys carved up the Sharks and Benji oh, yeah. did that step, step, step yeah. inside to. Um, Pat Richards, Pat Richards to Fitzhenry. I was sitting right in front, like they were running towards us. We're in the corner of all the Tigers, like a little gaggle of Tigers fans behind the post yeah. where um, Fitzhenry scored. Driving home and just listening like 2GB and fans just like, I remember just, I still distinctly remember driving back on the radio and a guy saying, um, do, you, do you think we can win the grand final? Like saying it to 2GB and I was driving home and going, you know what, like, 
But as a as a Tigers, like someone who grew up um, following the Tigers, like we never, I've never seen my team make the semi-finals. I was seventeen <laughs> years old, never seen us in the yeah. finals. I'm like, is it selfish to think that we can win a premiership here? And sure enough. It, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, what a year! I, I tried. I had to do my HSC that year. I was, uh, it was a, oh, bit of a, a bit of a distraction, but um, <laughs> it worked out in the end. Um, yeah, mate. Yeah, I agree. Like it's just yeah, it's just I think that's yeah. I actually remember that game. That was when I think we put. Um, I think that's when we really, you know, stamped our sort of our foot in the in the in the the, the minds of saying, well, people, we they can actually do this. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you're probably. Yeah, probably right there. Yeah, so. it's um definitely as a fan, a lot of people are, um yeah when we talk talk about that magical year that that game seems to come up. Uh, yeah, the oh yeah, hundred percent. Uh, yeah. Do you catch up with the O five squads? You always talk about how you guys are brothers. I see on social media you guys catch up uh, as a squad every now and then. Yeah, yeah, I try to do something every um every year obviously issues a little bit different because of what's happened yeah um but um yeah i um we normally do something together or like a even if it's just a, like last year we went to what's the last year that no, was actually the year before that because we couldn't go um uh last year we went to hunter valley and had a sorry the year before hunter valley together and We've done a like Melbourne Cup and I sort of organised trips and that for everyone. Yeah, nice. Um, yeah, just to and we we regularly speak to each other on the um on WhatsApp and all that. So we we're pretty much um yeah pretty much still close. Yeah, that's um, awesome. Bit harder these days, obviously, because you can't actually get together. But yeah. um, once once this is all out, we should be able to yeah make up for that. Yeah, and I imagine as you kind of get older and have kids and um, that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, and it's still a bit harder with everybody because you've got obviously Benji still playing yeah. um, at the time. I think last year, um, actually, yeah, Benji's the last one. So yeah, now Robbie's um, hung him up. Yeah, now yeah, now he's done. So um, yeah, so it's but we still yeah we still regularly yeah catch up with each other. That, that's awesome. And uh, mm. one person that's was part of that is uh, Tim Sheens. He's coming back, obviously. As soon as um, yeah, he can get yeah. playing pretty much. Yeah. Um, yeah. What do you, what do you, uh, have you kept in contact with Sheenzy since uh, since he left the club, and also what what do you think he will bring to the squad next year? Oh God, uh, I haven't really not too much contact. Like I've spoken to him uh, a handful of times since he's been over in England. Yeah. Um, mate, what is he going to bring? He's going to bring Jerry's wealth of experience. Um, knowledge in terms of recruitment, um, game management. Oh, he's going to bring a lot of things, mate. I think, you know, it's, I think it's probably one of the, the best things that the club's done is bring Sheenzy back because um, whatever coach works underneath him um, or with him, he's going to be, yeah, it's, he's going to benefit. So, uh, and I don't think, you know, I think making him a coach and director is probably the best. I think that's what I've been reading anyway. Um, you know, he'll be. I think he'll be good for anyone. Anyone that steps in that role. So, yeah. if you know, and if you want to read the reports with Madge, I don't know what's happening there. But if Madge stays, and mate, he's going to have such a um, you know, an advantage uh, having Tim Tim with him. Yeah. So, yeah. Can't. Yeah, I can't really praise him enough, mate. He's he's the best coach, best coach that I've ever obviously worked with and and been involved involved with. On that, was, my question was going to be: What's it? What was it like as a player? playing under him like what made him because so many um people like so many ex-players of his um between the tigers and the raiders as well back in the day speak so highly of him like what what is it about him that makes him so good to play for just his care and his knowledge about um his care for the players his knowledge about the game um you know he's 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 a he's a he's a student of rugby league he just loves uh, a rugby league, like he can hit me. If you get caught sitting next to next to him on a plane or a train, or in a car, mate, you're probably you know, and it's a two-hour drive. I guarantee you, hour and fifty minutes of it is talking about rugby league. Yeah. Um. You know, he just loves the game, and he knows everything about it. He's he's very, uh, you know, he's not scared to try things. And that was one thing with us in the '04. You know, the time that I was with when I was playing, he encouraged you to try and practice if you, if you practice it and, tra- and try the training he wasn't um you know he wasn't against you trying doing it on the field um you know you look at benji 
mate, the things Benji did on the field, I guarantee you, he did, you know, most of it at training and he probably stuffed it up at training a hundred more times. Yeah. But, but, you know, he encouraged that in that spot, mate, you know, allow Benji to do that on the field and for it to come off as well. Uh, um, and just like I said, he just cared, mate. He cared about the players. He cared not only your game, but, you know, your, your personal life and things like that. So yeah, he was, he was just, he was someone who you wanted to play for. And that's, that's, that's the secret to, to any good coach, mate. You want to play for your coaches. Yeah, absolutely. And we're like, as a fan, like everyone's so excited. Um, obviously, every bit of success that the club has had, um, he's been a part of it. So yeah, that that um, yeah, the fact that he's coming back to the club is um, yeah one of the positives that definitely us fans oh, yeah. are keen for uh, soon. All right, a few more uh, like more fun personal questions yeah. um, for yourself. Do you remember? Uh, your first try in rugby league. So I looked at looked at these up. Do you remember your very yeah. first try? Yeah, yeah, it's against the Gold Coast Chargers at uh, can't remember the stadium. Um, it was off a um, Paul Langmac uh, pass um, to the left of his, like a little short ball thing for me. So yep. I remember that. Yeah, clearly. Twenty six ten win over the Chargers at Carrara Stadium. Yeah, so that's it. That's uh, great. Your last try. Do you remember your last try in rugby league? Yeah, South Sydney wow. at uh, Le- Leichhardt Oval. Oh, uh, it's. I got down to Stadium Australia. We won nah. 54. Oh, yeah, 20. sorry. I lied. I lied. And what's South Sydney at Stadium Australia? Yeah. Because it was, it was the second time I retired. Yeah. <laughs> That's why. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was too. You scored so many, Robbie. it'd be hard to, hard yeah. to remember. <laughs> it was off of Robbie Far- Farrer, uh, dummy half pass. Um, and what was it? You talked about. Um, like your Magpies days, what was it like in '99 um, going through the merger? Like, was was uh, was it like nervous? Because obviously they had to turn two squads into one. Um, yeah, what, what was it like late '99 like for you as a player? Uh, look, it was it was tough because of um, uh, the, the not knowing what was going to happen the year after. Um, obviously, all that talk with the merger started pretty what around mid year, something like that. Um, and then, as a team, for us, we we weren't um, we weren't going obviously well. We came, you know, we came last basically. So it was more being worried that um, you know you weren't going to get a contract or whatever. So that sort of that sort of was creeping in in my mind. Um, but yeah, it's just it was just it was just a tough year because we were coming last with the magpies, and um, it was just going to be our second our second um, wooden spoon. So yeah, it wasn't it wasn't enjoyable, but being around the guys that were with was yeah, it was very enjoyable. Yeah, so and that, I made, ha- that made it easier. And I have to ask, what was it like playing for Tommy Rodonikus? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that was a good mate. He had his, he had his, you know, we had a lot of fun. Put it that way, you know, we yeah. obviously didn't have a, we didn't have a success. Uh, that we would hope for, um, but you know he he made up for that in his you know his ability to get you up every week and you know, you know just get you involved in the game and keep you hungry and, and want to be successful. So um, yeah, no, he was he was great to play with. He be, he was a very good mate too. So that's something that I you know I'll cherish forever that I, I got to work under Tommy. Yeah, and there's very few like um, like I didn't know Tommy personally, but there's very been very few. Celebrity in uh, quote uh, terms that like Des oh, yeah. really really just like hit me hard like it was someone I knew and Tommy just um, yeah that yeah. was yeah incredibly um, sad to hear about him. Oh mate, yeah definitely. Um, right to lighten the mood a little bit. So uh, I've got Patreon members. They actually there are a few people that actually do throw me a few couple of bucks to uh, support the show every now and then. So as a reward, <laughs> yeah. I uh, I let them. Um, ask some questions. So, well, yep. my co-host Rob um, got in first. He wanted to know what was it like. Uh, what was the feeling when uh, Hannay missed the conversion in the grand grand final in two thousand and five, which basically m- meant it was game over. Uh, my elation, satisfaction. Uh, they had to bloody keep me off the field because I was running on the field, about to run on the field. I think um, it was just yeah, just more. Relief, relief is probably the biggest, best word to put it that way because I knew we'd won it from there. Um, I knew there was no way of coming back. So, yeah, just relief. 
Yeah. <laughs> if there's, uh, this is from Sam. This was a um, bit of a complicated one. If there's one moment you could change in West Tigers history, what could it be? It'd be on on the field thing and off the field thing. Kind of something that it like like I said, use this term before, like a sliding door sort of moment. Um, that could have changed. Something. Oh, jeez. Oh. It is very random. Yeah, it is. Oh, look, if anything, I'd probably want, it would have been nice to win our first game at home at Campbelltown. So um, probably changed the result of our first game. We ended up drawing with the Broncos 24 yep. Um and you scored the first oh, try, of course. Actually, you know, you know what? Yeah, that that one, or probably um, uh, the loss of some of our players in the in two thousand, because we, I think we lost four or five players, and we went from being second to to finishing ninth. So yeah, in injuries. Year two thousand, yeah. Jared yeah. McCracken was he to two thousand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, yeah. we had Jared McCracken. I oh, mate, we lost the. Oh. I think we lost Jared McCracklin, Hopalwadi, Craig Field. Yeah. Uh, we lost about six players or something in the space of four weeks. Yeah. And we we, we lost, yeah, we basically went from being second to, to ninth by the end of the year. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that unfortunately, we changed the injuries in our first season. We finished 10th, actually. I think I remember, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we lost a few players, unfortunately. So, uh, yeah, if we could change that, would have been good. Uh, Aaron asks, what do you think the current squad is missing? Whether it's a piece on the field or a mental thing, what do you, what do you think could help change uh, this current <laughs> squad? God, it's a magic question, that one, isn't it? Um, yeah, I'm not really sure. I'll make the proud to answer that one. Either. <laughs> well, you said confidence before, so that's... Probably, yeah, yeah, belief, confidence, yeah. yeah. Probably belief. I think we're a great, we're a great squad. We've just got to get a bit of belief and confidence back yeah absolutely uh, um right justin he's snuck in a couple so favorite this is i don't know how you can ask this but favorite teammate <laughs> surely not just one no nah, no nah, i can't answer that too many i played i was i was lucky enough to play a lot of good ones and and mates that have, um you know are still mates now so yeah probably not a no no way to answer that one um without getting a few text messages saying why didn't you pick me <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. They won't. They won't be listening. That's all right. <laughs> um, is that next question? What would have happened if camera phones were around early in your career? <laughs> no comment. <laughs> um, and his last question, he snuck in. Do you have any coaching aspirations? Uh, not head coaching. Um, yeah, I don't think I have what it takes to be a head coach. Um, I, I enjoy the assistant coaching side of things because yeah, you're a bit more. You're a bit more. The, you're, the friendly one, I guess. Um, but yes, maybe down the track sometime. But okay. uh, at this, yeah, at this point in time, I mean, I'm, I'm really just doing what I'm doing at the moment. I'm enjoying what my role at the moment at the club. Yeah, awesome. Mm. Um, ben asked, "Do you like the, the new rule changes in the NRL, and do you think they would have suit the faster game would have suited you in your career?" Oh, it's hard to say because you would. Yeah. I say it would have probably suited me better. Yes. Um, do I like them? Like, there's, look, I can probably ramble on for the next hour on some <laughs> the ones I do and I don't. Um, there's probably a few that I. There's probably a lot that I don't. Okay. Um, but um, yeah, I'll sit on the fence in that one because yeah, it's hard to answer because there's a few yeah. that I, I, six I, I don't. Six again rules a big one. What's what's your opinion on that? I I thought I liked it. I think I still do like it. Um, because it just it keeps the game flowing. This, yeah. It just probably needs to be tweaked a little bit, um, but then they need to relax other rules to okay. to basically support that, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, I'm off to, I don't like the 10 minutes in bins for tackles that are not, not a high tackle and do all that bullshit. That's just, okay. Yeah. So, again, I think you can go forever in that conversation. Yeah. Unfortunately. Um, uh, lastly, Scott asked, how long did the party go for after the 2005 uh, grand final? And is it true that a player did a nudie run at Leichhardt Oval? The uh, party's still going. <laughs> goes goes every year. Um, and a nudie run at Leichhardt Oval. The only person I could think of that would have done that would be... Uh, 
It would have only been a player that didn't score. So I don't remember anyone that didn't score that year. So I can't. Ooh, I should have looked that up. Yeah, mm. unless I was asleep somewhere on the grass. <laughs> um, I don't recall anyone doing a nudie run at like that oval. He asks, is there anything else that you can actually remember from that night that's memorable uh, that you can share? Which, which night? The second night <laughs> of the grand final? The, the whole uh, week is one night, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, it just sort of goes in one big uh, four-week party. Um, oh, my, a lot of memories. Uh, being at Victoria, uh, about my lease club on on the balcony outside of Victor, uh, the lease club stand, Victoria Road was closed off. Yeah. Uh, and there would have been 5,000, 6,000 people there or whatever. It felt like 5,000 anyway. Um, just cheering us. It was great. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's probably something that stands in my mind. Um, a question, this is purely for me, for my enjoyment, so mm-hmm. sorry to the listeners. So you and I both share uh, a common love for muscle cars. So yeah. um, I still remember you had a VX, a red VX clubby back in yeah. back in those days that uh, I used to yeah, gawk as a young teenager. <laughs> um, do you have anything special along those lines in the garage these days? I don't know, unfortunately. I, um, I'm lucky enough to... Uh, drive a work car, a company car, um, from Wakeman Automotive, and um, so I haven't had a chance to sort of uh, invest in one at this point in time. So, but something down the, that I look forward to down the track. And what's your dream car? What's your if you could have any car uh, in the world, what would it be? Oh, geez, that's oh, that's the hardest question to ask any car lover, isn't get, it? Throw it I, I can't na- narrow it down to one either. Give, uh, give me a couple. Look, I've always been a holder man, but yep. I do like the uh, the um, XY GTs. Yep. I have to say, That's I've always been a lover. Favorite, yeah. Yeah, my brother-in-law's got a, a replica one, which is um, sensational. Yeah, um, I je- I'm jealous every time he rocks up to my house with it. Um, but any car, jeez. Yeah, I don't know. To be honest, I, <laughs> I think any anything with a bit of power, V8, an old yep. oldish, you know, pre pre eighties, pre like around the seventies, you know, the, that sort of era. Car would be pretty nice, like a, um, like a HZ, HZ. Yeah, sort of era. I, I'm actually I'm spewing them. I, I I didn't I didn't understand the value of it back then, but my dad had a um a charger, three speed charger. Yeah, right. Uh, and I ended up using it for paddy bashing at a farm. Yeah, and I think and I cringe now when I think about how I I drove and smashed it up. So yeah, the, I wish I, I wish I had that now. Yeah, it's just so, literally just leave it in a barn and be worth probably yeah. Six figures easily. Yeah, now, easy, yeah. So. My my dad. I'm. Um. My dad had a HQ GDS Monaro and sold it just before I was born. Oh. So, um. Yeah, I'm sure he uh, often wonders he shouldn't have had a kid and sort of just kept yeah. the, kept the Monaro. He's got yeah. I know so many people stories like that. A nine X Tirana is probably mine. Um. Yeah. For the record, but um, you know you're a car person when you can't answer. Just yeah. Right. One, yeah, one of those. There's, I oh know there's too many, mate. So yeah, um, I, lo- I love to have yeah each one of them in my, my garage. But <laughs> right, won't be, that won't be happening. Some fun, uh, some fun uh, quick hitters. I did the same with Sean Bloor and Adam Dwayne here. These same questions. Um, pretty easy. Favorite food? Uh, pasta. Pasta. Any um, any pasta dish in particular? Uh, no. Uh, most I think I think I think I most most like um uh, bolognese. I don't know it's a boring one, but a, a really slow cooked bolognese is probably my favourite. Okay. And do you yeah. have a favourite restaurant? Nah, I don't have a favourite. Nah, no. not really. Um, favourite TV show? Uh, Netflix at the moment. I'm enjoying um, Animal Kingdom. Okay. Mm. You like the 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 violent sort of. Um, oh, action sort of stuff, or? No, I don't know what it is. But not the vibe. I like the action side of it. Yeah, um, yeah. But I, I'm, I'm, I think this day and age it's hard to have a favourite, isn't it? Because there's so there's many. There's so many. Yeah. There's so I'm many talking all time on. too. Like, what's your what are you, what's your all time favourite? Oh, you show? can't you can't go past um, like a, a Seinfeld or Dukes of Hazard, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Seinfeld's so, probably, definitely up there for me. Yeah, Seinfeld, Dukes of Hazard. When I was younger, yeah. Um, always wanted the car, just as you can imagine. Yeah. So, yep. But, um, um, another the handle. Dodge. Yep. Yeah. The Dodge wasn't a Challenger or something. Uh, yeah, it's a Charger. I'm trying to think. In America, they call them Dodge. Is it a Dodge? Or a ta- I think it's a was Dodge. It, yeah, pretty sure it was a Dodge. The Challenger, wasn't it? The Challenger. Uh, is it a Challenger it or a Charger? I'll have to Google that. Char- yeah. You're probably right. 
you you probably remember that show a little bit. I mean, you're not that much older well, than me. But, um... I guess, yeah. A little bit fun. <laughs> <laughs> Favourite movie? Uh, um, Braveheart. Braveheart, yep. Great. Yeah. Yeah, great movie. Um, and last thing, what's your favourite thing to do that's got nothing to do with footy? Golf. Golf. My yeah. uh, Shane, my co-host, uh, has become massive on golf and you've been on a few golf days with him, have you, have you seen him hit a ball before? Uh, yeah, I haven't, but he talks it up like he hits it. I was going to say, he reckons it's incredible. I was going to say, uh, you can confirm that I for me. No, I can't confirm. He keeps telling me this, but um, I haven't seen him hit the ball yet. So, yeah. he, um, he put he a whole he's simulator. A... He bought a, a brand new simulator <laughs> to put, put in, his, uh, in his workshop. He's crazy. Oh, yeah. God. Yeah, no, apparently he's all right. I haven't seen him play, but um, I've been looking forward to have a game with him soon. So hopefully, yep. hopefully soon. So, um, um, there yeah. you go. I, I looked it up for you. It's a 1969 Dodge Charger. You're it right. is a Charger. So, okay. Yeah. 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 I'm more, I'm more of a Holden guy, but um, yeah, Hemi, Hemi Ford, anything, like you said, anything with a V8. Um, yeah, we, we could. I could do a whole podcast talking cars with you one day, but I think my uh, my rugby league listeners might get they get annoyed at me when I talk about basketball, let alone cars. No, so um, that's all right. Thank, thanks heaps for um, having a chat with us. No worries, mate. You know, we'll yeah. Hopefully, we can actually physically go to a game. Um, oh, yeah, as soon as the season not. gets underway, and yeah, yeah, see you out there. Fingers crossed, mate. So thanks again. Hopefully, uh, yeah, see you soon. For listening to another episode of the West Life podcast, as always, we are sponsored by West Ashfield Leagues Club and as well as MG Pump Solutions. If you could please subscribe, if you'd love to hear us again, we're going to have episodes every twice a week, every week this season, Mondays and Thursdays. So we're going to, as the season rolls in, uh, be sure to catch us every week. And if you can, give us a like on the socials, so at Westlife Pod on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, search for Westlife Podcast on Facebook. And if you'd like to take part in the show, uh, patreon.com forward slash Westlife. It's just a couple of bucks a month to help grow the show. We'll see you again next time on the Westlife Podcast.